for those people who don't know who you are, and they should be ashamed, uh, can I just <laughs> get your name and title? Yeah, of course. I'm Jeff Kaplan. I'm the game director on Overwatch. What's your average day like? I'm sure you don't have one, but if you had to have one, what, what, what's a Jeff day like? Um, my days are kind of fascinating. Um, I have to switch context a lot. I like to check out the build to make sure like, hey, is the game, you know, what's the state of the working. game? Yeah, not just working, but like, is everything going in the direction that we think it should be going? And does that involve, like, uh, are you playing a couple of games and uh, switching between characters? Are you, are yeah. Are you looking for things in particular? Or do you fall back on like, oh, I just want to, I want to fall into it like a fun zone for a while. Really just trying to come at the game like as a, as a player, um, but looking at it holistically and notes as small as like move that one box to more high level like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. And so then you have a bit of that time to yourself and, and then what happens after that? Then I usually roll into some series of meetings um, and uh, meetings can be like, like an example is I have a fun recurring uh, set of meetings with our animation group and that's where uh, I'm lucky enough to be a part of the group that helps with the animated shorts that, that we do like, like Dragons and Last Bastion um, and we're sort of always working on what are the next ones and what stories you want to tell and we could be reviewing um, the scripts, we could be just you know jamming out the idea from scratch, we could be looking at animatics all the way down to you know, something's in pre -biz and we're now seeing animation and lighting come in. So, you know, that's like a, a dream. We'll do a lot of review meetings uh, for the teams, um, meaning like we'll have a weekly map review and we'll, um, we'll have the art director and the lead environmental artist and the lead level designer and the assistant game director and we'll all be looking at all the maps that are in production and giving feedback and notes on that. I like to spend a lot of time with our lead writer Michael Chu talking about um, you know what story elements are we working on or for uh, doing VO for a new character like when we did Arisa going over all of her lines and going you know that doesn't quite sound uh, quite right and looking at that stuff. You're putting that creative writing degree to work. No, the irony is I'm like the worst writer. Michael does all the writing. He's the brilliant writer. I'm just that annoying guy who will say like, nah, that's not quite right. What if we, you know, I'm like the guy who thinks he knows about writing, yeah. but I really don't. But if he ever questions me, then I mentioned it to him that I have a master's in creative <laughs> writing. Sometimes meeting with other game teams and helping them out, you know, they want to, uh, we have some questions, how did you guys do this? We could, looking for some advice, or we'll do the same thing, we'll need advice. You know, when we were doing the loot box system, we went to the Hearthstone team and the Diablo team to like, how do your guys' systems work? And what did you learn? What's right and wrong? So I spend a lot of time uh, up and about and talking to people um, about how to basically make our game and our service better. I feel like, really broadly speaking, uh, modern games are getting more complicated on a systems level uh, because we can do more, so you know, there's the tendency to put as much in there as possible. Overwatch is almost comically simple, but there's a huge amount of depth there. I can't imagine the process of stripping back. Yeah, um, a lot of that a lot of that is inspiration from some of the other teams. I think the Hearthstone team is the best team in the business at that, of stripping down and not bloating the game with features. The interesting part about Overwatch was we were on an extremely tight time schedule. Um, so I know a lot of people think, you know, Blizzard games don't have a date and, you know, it's ready when it's ready and, um, you, you know, we have all the time in the world. And, and the truth of the matter is, Every Blizzard project has a date. We just don't tell people that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, and then we'll cancel it if it's if it's not good, and you know people won't know that it ever existed. And we'll only announce it when we're like really certain it's going to come out. So um, it's kind of created this mythos that like we have endless amounts of time to do things. Yeah. But um, with Overwatch, we had a very aggressive date that we were we were interested in hitting uh, for a lot of reasons, and. To achieve that and to have a vision that every single person on the team could understand, it was an absolute requirement to just pare down and get as few systems in the game as possible. I literally had a document um, at the start of the project called the Project Scope document 
And the whole promise to the team with that document was that every single feature we're going to do is going to be on that list. And if you have any question, if you're ever wondering, like, oh, are we doing a itemized uh, inventory system? Like, that sounds interesting. A lot of games have that. I could literally refer people to the, the doc and say, like, no, we, we, we didn't scope for it. It's not in the scope right now. It's not that we couldn't add that, but at least let's have it be a really serious conversation. Like, do we really need that to achieve our vision? Coming out with a PvP-only game is really hard and you get a lot of criticism for it. In fact, if you read some of the game reviews that came out when the game was launched, one of the things that we got criticized for was not having a single player element to it. And um, I, I, I was one of those people. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, I, I take it back now, but because I was rubbish at, I still am like bad at first person shooters. And I, and I went, oh, I don't know if I want to play a game where I'm just competing against people who are just fucking amazing at them. Uh, yeah, but but it ended up being that you know you put such a reliance on support on on different ways of playing that I mean I didn't need to get a headshot every time that I ended up completely eating my words. I mean, think about how many games that you've played that have the amazing single player. We're talking but, about Uncharted. We're talking about why Uncharted I did had not, multiplayer. I'm not mentioning any games, but there's these games that have amazing single player, mm. but they kind of have this phoned in multiplayer, or the opposite amazing multiplayer, but they have that like campaign thing that none of us quite did. Yeah. And I feel like those, none of those came for free. Like you actually, there were developers who could have dedicated themselves wholly to the vision of the core product. And in our case, we've, we've always been 100% um, truthful with our player. It's a PVP team-based shooter. Mm -hmm. Like if you love PVP, this is a game for you. And I kind of trip out that people somehow think like, well, if it had that like 15 hour kind of crappy campaign, it would have been a better game. Um, we, we look at somebody who's played Overwatch for 15 hours as almost a failure. Like, oh, you've only played it for 15 hours. We're at, people have thousands of hours yeah. now in the game and um, somehow the game is lesser because um, it doesn't have some feature. I don't know, like I hope in hindsight, there's a lot of people who look back and go like, Maybe we shouldn't be evaluating games on um, parity of features and start looking at games as what are they trying to achieve and what's their core competency and were they great at that? Yeah. I actually think we would have better games. Yeah, it would be sure. better for the players. Games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What other developers do you look at for inspiration? I feel like a lot of, a lot of Blizzard's games look at each other for inspiration and also content now. Uh, you know, with that games of service, you're looking at Heroes and Hearthstone uh, are taking elements from different games. Uh, what do you look at as other developers doing interesting things? Well, obviously, like you said, the, it's, the Blizzard guys are who we take the most inspiration from, uh, especially because we're fortunate enough to get to know them and we get to have lunch with them. I, you know, earlier today I was talking with Dustin Browder, who was, you know, former game director on on Heroes, and Eric Dodds, who was a former game director on Hearthstone. So there's this wealth of knowledge that we can gather around the studio, which is super valuable. But I take a lot of inspiration, you know, from outside um, Blizzard as well. Uh, I think Valve is amazing. Um, I was fortunate enough to hear Robin Walker talk about a lot of um, their development philosophies behind what they did with Team Fortress when they took it free to play. And I think it's absolutely genius and the way in which he communicates it and the way in which he steered that franchise was just sort of mind blowing. Um, I'm playing uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild right now and uh, I think it's one of the most amazing games ever. And then I, I realized that those developers have put out videos. And so now like I'm on this quest, like I want to watch everything that those guys have to say because I just think that they're that brilliant. Um, one of my favorite tidbits from one of the videos was, um, and, and forgive me for, um, I, I can't recall the developer's name right now, but he's talking about all the challenges of you know, integrating physics into a game and how important that was with Breath of the Wild. And then uh, he sort of ends it with his, it was in his GDC talk, he ends it with, so we just sort of licensed the Havoc engine and that worked out great. I'm <laughs> like, well, there you go. That was it very pragmatic. Good you know? choice, yeah. yeah. You mentioned Team Fortress 2. What, what, what did you take from them, uh, you know, heading into Overwatch as, as lessons of 
how to go forward. There are certain games, there are certain genres where you can say that genre is really cool, but nobody's done it right. Yeah. With Team Fortress 2, that's not the case. Like that game is a masterpiece. Like I, when I talk about design elegance, it's one of the games that I refer to the most. So it, it's, and it has a tremendous audience who is rabid for the game and loves the game. So it wasn't a matter of like, hey, we should make a, a better Team Fortress 2. What was really compelling us at the time was uh, a lot of us were playing MOBAs. We were playing Dota 2, Heroes of the Storm, League of Legends. And you were starting to see, especially in the online community, this sense of team play develop, where there were a lot of shooters out there that were touting themselves as being team-based shooters, but at the end of the day, you were just watching the scoreboard, hoping you had more points or kills than, than anybody else. Like, in, in a lot of the games I was playing, you'd play like team death matches, and you're almost annoyed, like you, you turn a corner and you see somebody and you're like, oh, you're on my team. Like, what are you gonna do for me? And, cause there's no way to interact with them. There's no um, game mechanics that actually encourage you to play with your team. It was more about, I want a target rich environment. But in the MOBA scene, we were really seeing a different vibe going on where people cared about the win or the loss at the end of the match more than what their personal um, successes or failures were. You were really gonna stand together as a team or you're gonna fail together as a team. And we thought that that was something that we could really bring um, to Overwatch. We also wanted to bring back um, a lot of our inspiration from the early um, shooters that, that sort of came out in the late 90s, like you know Quake and Unreal uh, Tribes, where they had this crazy amounts of movement. And we're like, you know, we think they can still be awesome. We think we can give you a character that flies. And you, know, you, t you tell somebody back when we were originally pitching Overwatch, like we have this character, she dual wields machine pistols and she can blink 30 meters across the map as quick as you can hit the button. And they're like, well, yeah, that's not gonna work. Like, how are you guys gonna make that balance? How are you gonna make it? And we really believe like, no, there's room for this. Um, there, there's a world where this can exist. I think the other core difference in Overwatch between what was out there before was embracing each of the heroes as a person and as a character that you were gonna care about. So they weren't sort of a generic class. We weren't saying like, um, you know, here's the Reaper class. Or like, the medic. Or, yeah. yeah, Reaper is a guy, it's Gabriel Reyes, and he's gone through all this terrible stuff and he has a backstory and he has relationships with the other characters and you kind of want to know more about them and you get the banner between them. And I think it's that personal relationship that exists with the player and who these heroes are and wanting to either know more about them or or simply identifying with them that really kind of made Overwatch resonate for a lot of people. There's a lot of people who love Overwatch and are obsessed with it and don't play the game. It's really interesting what you said about giving characters names and backstories as a way, as a way of attaching because I was saying, uh, I was speaking to uh, Jeff Goodman earlier and, and I was talking about how Bastion is my favorite character, but I'm actually terrible, I'm a terrible Bastion player. I, I stay in one place for way too long I, I'm used to running with left shift, so he immediately just stops and transforms and stuff. But I constantly go back to him because I feel sorry for him. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, well, if, if I don't take him and try and protect him, someone else is just gonna get him killed. And it's, it's such a weird mentality to have for a video game character in a, in like a class-based shooter. Arnold Sang, who is our assistant art director, and a gentleman named Ben Zhang, who is one of our concept artists, they were both drawing versions of Bastion. And at one point, uh, we were talking about how our art style should sort of coalesce. And there was this idea that we wanted things to look a little weathered. You know, if you look at some of our characters, they have smudges on their guns, and like they're not this perfect, you know, plastic looking yeah. characters. And they were drawing Bastion, and I think it was Ben who put some bird poop just on Bastion's like shoulder to like like rough him up or whatever. And then it led into this whole story where Ben and Arnold just said, well, there's bird poop, well, where's the bird? Okay, now the bird's there, what does the bird mean? And it sort of developed this whole character that then inspired the movie of The Last Bastion. Um, it could have just been a generic robot, but there's like that bird alone 
when you see this crazy turret, like the first time you saw the gameplay movie when we announced, and you see this crazy turret shooting all these bullets and then just the bird showing up. I think um, it's in the little things like that that let people know like, hey, this is a little bit different and it's okay to ask questions and eventually we might even answer them for you. And then, I mean, that's inspiring other people to make their own content. I mean, your remix videos that go around are <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And it must be like, you're looking forward to the release of someone else's content that's just about you, unless you hate them. I, I am not looking forward to it. <laughs> that's one thing I'm not looking forward to. Two to the one, from the one to the three. What's up? This is Jeff from the Overwatch team. However, I, they're the they are the funniest things ever. I'm blown away by his talent. Like uh, on just like a pure technical level, you know, as a craftsman, I, I like to analyze his talent level, and I'm like, wow, he is super talented. And then I think of these other creepy moments, like. Like he spent a lot of time looking at me and, and listening. And your mouth specifically. Yeah. And listening to me talk, that's a little weird, um, but the community loves it. Um, yeah. At this point, the community gets excited for developer update. They kind of care less what, I, what I'm telling them. They're just excited to see what's Dino Flask going to yeah, do next. Yeah, the abridged yeah. version. <laughs> uh, the thing that really ties me to Overwatch to the point where I'm not sure if I'm going to pick up another first person shooter unless it does something uh, better in, in, in this regard is the positivity. Uh, there's a sense of hope, there's a sense of positivity, there's a sense of inclusiveness. Uh, why do you think that you guys are the ones making that game where there are so, so few developers are willing to go to that place, a place of optimism? Uh, why is that a scary place to to set a game. Uh, I, I realized this as a writer before I got into making games. There are um, certain things that are immediately charged with uh, conflict and interest for people. And I think it's very easy to go, okay, let's take a city like Los Angeles and just destroy it mm -hmm. right away. And instantly that has an emotional response. You, you're getting an Im immediate shock out of people and it, it pulls an emotional response out of them. So I think that there's an easy, obvious way for game developers to kind of get, a, get, get sort of a kick out of somebody. And um, a lot of the times that steers more towards the negative, you know, like how many times have we seen the White House burning and, you know, like the world is ending and, um, it does create an immediate conflict, and if you, you know, throw a gun in somebody's hand and put them in, you know, here you go, you're standing in front of the White House with the gun, like, it's easy storytelling at that yeah. point to kind of get somebody emotionally charged. And I think a harder view is like, you know, what if Washington DC was the coolest place on the earth to go and hang out? Like, it's not immediate how to throw a gun in somebody's hands and then go. Yeah. But it's awesome. Yeah, but yeah. it's awesome. And you're not doing something really evil. You know, yeah. it's like, um, so I think it's challenging to come up with a uh, bright and ho hopeful future. So I just, to end it off, I plugged some questions into uh, Google and they started auto-completing. So I just figured I'd ask you some of the, some oh, of the, no. some <laughs> of the ones that I didn't have answers for. Uh, why does Blizzard hate McCree? We don't hate McCree. I think, uh, I think McCree players are a little bit, um, they're, they're feeling unrepresented right now. Um, because there's just not enough white guys in, in games? <laughs> there's that? not enough, yeah. <laughs> that could be one reason. <laughs> um, I think McCree is a guy we haven't touched in a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, players take us not touching somebody as neglect rather than us maybe thinking they're not as bad off as yeah, other players. We think. nailed it the first time around. Yeah. Uh, why does Soldier 76 have white hair? He's an old guy. There you go. See? This, why, I don't know why they even had to He's ask been him. reading the forums too much. <laughs> <laughs> why does Lucio like hockey? Uh, because hockey is the greatest sport on the planet. Why does Sombra do no damage? She does amazing damage. Um, people just need to learn to play. <laughs> nice! I'm going to pay nice. for that one. Yeah. That's, that's going to be rough later. Will, will Overwatch go on sale for Christmas? I don't know. I actually genuinely don't know. Okay. Um, and I, I said this was an autocomplete one, but I, I do have one of them, which is uh, I read on Google that uh, as part of your creative writing degree, you did poetry. I did. Yeah. I was wondering if you could remember any of your work and we could sign off with some classic Kaplan. No, no. Um, I know you're lying. No, I, I, uh, 
I like Wordsworth more than classic Kaplan. Mm -hmm. uh, and my favorite Wordsworth, uh, this is cheesy because I'm not, you wanted some poetry that I wrote, but it was all crappy or else I'd be Most a Most people won't know I, who Wordsworth is, I, so you can, okay. you can just own this one. Um, this is one that I hope a lot of internet gamers can relate to because I think a lot of times we're solitary people. Um, and it's, uh, I, wandered as, uh, I wandered lonely as a cloud. But the, the very last l line is, uh, for oft on, uh, for oft on, on my, oh, I'm gonna blow it now. For oft when on my couch, I, I, uh, I, vacant or in pensive mood. In vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. Um, and thank you for helping me out. I did terrible, but the bliss of solitude, I think, is uh, again, it's like one of those positive ways of looking at things that a lot of times people you know, look, take something like loneliness and they make it this bad negative thing, but then there's this other world where like um, enjoying this moment to yourself and he's out there looking at the daffodils. It's like the greatest, you know, thing in the world to him. But I totally butchered his lines. Beautiful, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank really you. appreciate it. Also, I got a hug from the other Jeff. Do you want to be the only Jeff in the building that didn't hug me? I will have a hug. Thank you very much. Uh. Thanks for coming all the way out. We appreciate that was fantastic. it. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for saving me too. I, now, I, now I feel like a, a I hack. I also like that poem. I yeah. It. So in, in, high, in college, I made remembered it. It's yeah. when I was like on the spot. I I'm know, like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs>